Everybody, welcome to Inside Golf, presented by Susquehanna Wealth Management. I'm Harry Donahue, and today we're at the Seaview Resort in Absica, New Jersey, which in a couple of weeks will be hosting the 2014 edition of the ShopRite Classic. Last year's winner, Kari Webb, will be joining us. We'll talk about what it means to play in this event again and defend, and about her spectacular Hall of Fame career. We'll also catch up with a program sponsored by the PGA of America called the College Connection Program. It helps get college students involved in the game of golf and shows them how it may help them in their professional careers. It's coming up next on Inside Golf, presented by Susquehanna Wealth Management. Inside Golf, presented by Susquehanna Wealth Management, helping you build, manage, and preserve wealth. And by the Philadelphia Section PGA, experts in the game and business of golf. Honey, what are all these cash rewards? Stellar checking with Smart Rewards. We earn cash on check card purchases and when we transfer money from our Stellar checking into our savings account. Cool. How should we spend them? Mm. Stellar. 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 Probably groceries. <sighs> Stellar checking from Susquehanna Bank. Earn cash rewards whether you're spending or saving. Member FDIC. Well, welcome back to Inside Golf, presented by Susquehanna Wealth Management. And we have with us the defending champion, the 2013 winner of the ShopRite Classic here at Seaview, Kari Webb. Kari, great to see you. Yeah, good to see you too. Thanks for having me. Special memories back here at Seaview? Yeah, definitely. I mean, I've always loved this place, uh, Seaview Golf Course and the area in general, general. And then the tournament's always been a uh, favorite of mine. And to add my name to the champions list last year was very special. You know, you talk about the names on that champion trophy, uh, some of the best in the history of the LPGA. You have Annika's name there, uh, Julie Inkster going back a little bit, Dottie Pepper won here, Betsy King. Does it mean something special to look up there at who's won in the past and now see Kari Webb's name on that trophy? Yeah, it really does. I think um, it was just last year, um, just sitting, they have it in, on one of the walls in the hotel. and. And I hadn't realized how many great players have, have been champions here. So um, I don't know if it was just uh, that thought in my head that, uh, that propelled me to go and, and add my name to that list. But um, this course definitely has uh, brought out the best of the LPGA. You know, it brought out the best in you last year. You came off the pace a little bit, right? You were what, four shots back, I think, at the beginning of uh, the final round. Shot a 300 par score and I guess waited around to see what would happen. Yeah, um, it was a challenging last round. It was really, really windy. Uh, and I got off to a great start, birdied the second, which is a really tough, tough par four, and then eagled the third. So it really uh, put me in contention uh, almost immediately and, you know, I hung on at the end to win. This isn't a particularly long course. They have added a little length to it, though. They've changed all the tee boxes and maybe added a couple hundred yards from last year. But it's a Donald Ross design. It's right by the bay. And the winds, it seems, are always up. It, make, it kind of, uh, shall we say, makes it a little bit tougher, doesn't it, when you look at what the yardage is compared to maybe how the course plays? Yeah, that's right. I think um, the greens are so tiny. Uh, so uh, when the wind's up, uh, it's generally a bit of a cross breeze, too. So. Um, it just makes those greens and those targets even smaller to hit. Um, and then the greens are, you know, they're Donald Ross greens, so that you can even have a 10-footer, and, and it can be one of the hardest 10-footers you'll, you'll hit. I know. I've played here several times. If you don't hit it at the right spot, all of a sudden you get that Donald Ross runoff, and uh, a three is looking like a six real quick. Yeah, that's right. Um, <laughs> you know, I managed to, to play the greens, obviously, very well last year. And, um, you know, if you do miss the green, it's, it's usually a tricky up and down. And, and uh, I managed to, to make some putts for birdies and get up and down when I needed to. Cara, you're from Australia, and uh, you began how old when you first picked up a golf club? Uh, officially, uh, eight years old. A real officially? Golf, a real golf club when I was eight. Um, I was playing with the plastic ones before that. How long did it take you to say, hey, I really love this game? Uh, I think I loved it, you know, from four years of age. Um, I was asking for real clubs around the age of six, and my grandparents gave me a real set when I was for my eighth birthday. Um, and then I think by the age of 11, I came home and told my parents I wanted to be a professional golfer when I grew up. So. And how long did it take you to realize, hey, I can make a living at this game, and I can compete with the best, and then come over and play here in the States on the LPGA Tour? Um, I think it was just a gradual progress. You know, I, I got better at every level um, I stepped up to, and um, obviously, 
I could never have imagined that my career would turn out to be as great as it has been. Um, it's, it's been a very special ride and hopefully uh, I can add some more special moments before I'm done. 75 wins, I think, internationally, some 40 or more here in the States and seven majors. You still got a couple majors left in you? I hope so, yeah. Um, you know, I've obviously started off the year uh, well this year and, and I had a good year last year. So um, the goal is to, to give myself uh, some more chances uh, to win majors. I mean, they're the, the biggest ones we play. So it'll be nice to add a couple. You know, on both tours, uh, the men's PGA Tour here in the States, the LBGA Tour, every year we see some new blood. And uh, now, of course, the hot topic, I guess, on your tour is Lydia Ko, 17 years old. Uh, she's pretty good, isn't she? She is. Uh, it's, it's really amazing. Uh, you know, at 17, I was, you know, thinking about turning pro in a couple of years, but, uh, you know, it's, she's won three times on the LPGA already, and, uh, you know, it is, it is, it's, it's truly amazing to watch. Um, you know, I hope, I hope by her starting so young doesn't mean that when she's mid 30s she's done. You know, I hope she's a name that's around for a long time and and she's winning. You know, in a couple of decades to come. You know, we get back to this golf course here at Seaview. Does it remind you of anything back home in Australia? No, it doesn't. No. <laughs> um, but I, I love Donald Ross courses. Um, one of my U.S. Open wins was at um, Pine Needles in North Carolina, which is a Donald Ross course. Uh, I, I, I love the design. I love the atmosphere here. It's, um, you know, it's pretty casual. Um, but when you get out there, the course uh, isn't casual. You gotta, you gotta play good. Okay, I'm going to ask one final question. In your career as a professional, can you take me back to one shot that you pulled off and it meant so much, and you weren't, you had maybe some doubts that maybe you could do it. But you execute it, and it helped you win, say, a major or a big tournament. Was there one shot that you can recall? Yeah, that's a pretty easy question for me. Is it? Yeah, um, I hold a wedge uh, at Kraft Nabisco in 06 for, uh, to, for Eagle uh, on the last hole of the tournament um, to get me into a playoff. So, and then I won the playoff. Wow! How far out? I was 116 yards. And you made the uh, plunge into the pond? I did afterwards, yeah. It was, uh, it was very, uh, probably the most excited I've ever been in my life. Uh, it's something that I'll always remember. That's, that's certainly a, a Kari moment, huh? Yeah, yeah, well, it was, I guess, un -Kari like because of the way I reacted. But um, it, was, uh, it was really, um, you know, I'd come off a, uh, being inducted into the Hall of Fame the year before, but um, going winless on the LPGA for the first time uh, in a season. Uh, so it was a great way to get back in the winner's circle. Well, let's hope you get back in the winner's circle again this year here at Seaview. Pleasure talking to you, and yeah, maybe this time it. next year we'll do it again. Right, I'd love we'll, it. we'll put it down on our calendar. Yeah, I'd love that. It'd be great. <laughs> Go for the three P. Yep. Kari Webb, our defending champion here at Seaview for the upcoming LPGA Shoprite Classic. Bill Hansen is the tournament manager for the Shoprite Classic, presented by Acer. And uh, Bill, talk a little bit about the field. How many players do you have in the field, and tell us about some of the names? Yeah, great, Harry. Um, we have 144 uh, players in the field. Um, right now, we have 95 of the top 100 on the money list. We have commitments. Um, and 10 of the 10 uh, top Rolex uh, world ranking players. So that includes Lydia Ko and uh, obviously Stacey Lewis, MB Park. So we have obviously one of the strongest fields. Uh, so you have a, a who's who of uh, the LPGA Tour coming back here to see you. Absolutely. We have every winner on tour so far this year. Lydia Ko, Stacey Lewis, Paula Creamer, uh, Michelle Wee. So we have a very, very strong field this year. What is it, do you think, the attraction that brings so many people back here year after year of the top players? I think people are just familiar with this event. They like the area. Um, they like the Atlantic City area. I think they're just familiar with this event. And, and to be honest, really, ShopRite is, is one of the best title sponsors in golf. And I think, uh, I think it shows and the players come, come back for it every year. All right, so give us the dates and how people can, uh, who are watching right now, put it on their calendar and get involved, get some tickets. Yeah, absolutely. Um, just go to www.shopritelpjclassic.com. Get tickets, all sorts of information, and the tournament is May 26th to June 1st, weekend after Memorial Day. Does it get any better like, than that? Great way to kick off the summer season for folks in the Philadelphia area and come down to the shore maybe a little earlier than they would or stay over after Memorial Day. Absolutely. I mean, you can't beat it. If the weather's perfect like it is today, I mean, it's, it's the field. The field's fantastic. Crowds are going to be large. You can't beat it. Thanks, Bill. Good luck. Thank you very much. At this moment, across the country, families are packing their bags for a getaway. And no matter where they end up, they'll all be home by dinner.
plan your own at playgolfamerica.com. From finding fun and affordable programs to finding advice from PGA and LPGA professionals, playgolfamerica.com has a way for you to get away. Visit today for details. Playgolfamerica.com, your link to the game. Welcome back to Inside Golf, presented by Susquehanna Wealth Management. You know, anyone involved in the game of golf would like to see the game grow. Get people involved who up to this point haven't been. The PGA of America has sponsored what's known as the College Connection Program. And Lila Mackey from the Philadelphia section of the PGA recently went to Philadelphia Country Club with a group of students from Villanova University. They got involved in the program with the host pro, Scott Riley. Thanks, Harry. I'm here at Philadelphia Country Club with head golf professional Scott Riley to discuss our PGA College Connection program. Banter and actually like giving people a hard time is a good thing. It kind of lightens up the mood. You know, if you're just, oh gosh, you know, I'm going to play golf, then you won't really ever enjoy it. So have fun. The Philadelphia section of the PGA has created a program that targets college students, especially business majors, mm -hmm. and it's four sessions and it's at a local country club. It teaches them the game of golf and also the business aspect that golf can have. We want to avoid holding it like a baseball bat where you let your left thumb go off the side. When you go to the top, if your left thumb is off, this club's going to have a lot of movement. So that's why the left thumb going down the shaft is really important. Seeing business and golf and how it mixes so well, what do you think students will gain from this after doing a program like this? Students not only are going to get the basics of what they need to be able to go out to the golf course, and have a good time, but they're also gonna uh, take with them some cause and effect relationships of shots, um, the knowledge to be able to go to the golf course, understand some of the etiquette principles, be able to carry themselves, look like they know what they're doing, and be able to you know, have an, have an impact on the game where hopefully they're gonna get more involved with it. It's really, it's really a key to try to get them spurred um, to wanna pick up a golf club, find a way to be able to get reintroduced to the game again if they've been away from it for a while. So. That's really important. And most of these people were senior, most of these students were seniors Correct. going into the business world. Hopefully when they get invited to play in a corporate outing, the networking aspect is huge, Absolutely. especially for females. It's a really big um, advantage for females to be able yeah. to play golf in the business world. What do you think doing it at a private club, what do you want them to take away from the private club experience? Yeah, I mean, obviously many of the students, the only time they're really getting to a private club is either a relative has invited them to play, they may have been to a private club for a wedding. So they get to look out and see that beautiful golf course and never get the opportunity. So here at Philadelphia Country Club, we tried to take them out onto the golf course. We brought some of those key things to them to allow to see the facility. Um, you know, public golf courses, we'd love for them to take more initiatives, to have programs and continue to do their things to grow the game of golf. Uh, and hopefully open their eyes to the private club experience of maybe a little bit more serene. Uh, we, take, we took them out to a setting where it was just them at, like one, at our practice hole. So the opportunity for them to kind of um, maybe see that different side of it where it's just hustle and bustle every day where they get to see a little bit of that more subdued kind of quiet style where they can really get that quiet time to focus on the game was really important to us for right. them to see it. And the golf industry in general has been struggling with getting younger people into the game. And I've found that just people are my age just don't know why people would join a country club. They don't know why people would want to pay that much money for a membership. Sure. But coming out here and being able to see it and take from yeah. take lessons from a PGA professional and learn the game from a PGA professional, I think will really make a difference in how, um, how these guys continue to play the game. Thomas is going around checking grips there. How tight should we hold the club? Scale of one to 10, what do you guys think? Uh, four, four. yeah, about a four, yeah. really good. So if we can be in, a, in about a four, if we go ahead and bring the club vertical right up in front of us, very good. Awesome. If you go as light as you possibly can, the club's actually going to be. I think it's a great networking tool. Um, it's a sport that you can carry with you for your whole life, um, and it's a great time to. Uh, it's a great way to get to know someone for an extended period of time and build a lot of relationships. I was so far behind because I didn't start until I was 21, so I thought that there would be no way that I would be able to compete and play with friends and that I would just slow everybody down if I was ever to play. So this, taking five lessons and learning how to drive, how to use an iron, how to putt, and how to use a pitching wedge, just makes me feel like I'm all set to actually play a full game. You guys are all pretty smart, so you're, you're in, you're, some of you are seniors, so four years at Villanova, we'll see if this is... So what did Sir Isaac Newton say? He said, for every action, there's what? 
equal and opposite reaction. So golf is kind of the opposite that way. We need to get the leading edge of this club right here to the bottom of this golf ball, okay? A golf ball has a dimple. The dimples are what create lift. So all we need to do is try to get this ball to roll up this mini ramp. When I first kind of this approached the game, it, it, it seemed a much more difficult sport to get into, maybe versus like basketball, where you could just go and pick it up uh, and learn very quickly. It seems like a game that has so much muscle memory involved that it would be difficult to just jump into that setting. So having a program like this, where you could really be exposed to the sport and learn the basics um, the right way from the get-go was just a great way to, uh, to learn it more of a pitching wedge, sand wedge. Now from in the, here, over the long haul, you know, if they way, continue with it and they see that, maybe the private club that they, they got to see during these lessons Something might be like a, cl that, a club down the road that they may even want to um, join. You know, those networking opportunities, those opportunities to, to be with prominent maybe business leaders, um, other figureheads that may be members at some of these private clubs will allow them to, um, you know, grow in their professions, allow them to establish lifelong friendships, hopefully, mm -hmm. and get to be a part of uh, a place where they feel like they can call home and allow their families as well to grow at the, in the private club. So it's really an important aspect. Um, not only at, at the private clubs, but at the public courses as well. They yeah, can experience the same thing. I think, um, I think in this market, it works really well. Villanova, obviously, right here. Mm -hmm. And Philadelphia, people don't really like to leave Philadelphia. No, when hopefully they they'll want to stay for a long time. When they were born and raised here, yep. it seems that they stay here. And um, so hopefully it'll benefit your facility later sure, on absolutely. and other facilities in the area, along with the game and industry as a whole. Yeah, yeah we're happy to do it. and. Uh, we thank the Philadelphia PGA and uh, the PGA America and their continued efforts to grow the game. And we recognize that this age group of, let's say, 18 to 34 year olds, college students, can, can really be a vital part of growing the game again. So we need to do everything we can to, to continue to focus on this um, demographic and continue to get them involved. So if you're, if you're close and you're here just off the green, go ahead and putt the ball. That's your least risky option. Matches, the golf association, all the handicapping, everything is so different. It's just a totally different. When you step out, make sure you go all in. Because at Valley Forge Casino Resort, we're rolling out the action. And we'll bring it all to the table. So take us for a spin and go all in for the win. Valley Forge Casino Resort. It's safe, it's chic, and only a shuffle away from the main line. Guests of Teed Off receive gift certificates to any of the eight restaurants at Valley Forge Casino at King of Prussia. We do well now, you have to operate a business. Uh, you know, we got big Welcome players. back to Inside Golf, presented by Susquehanna Wealth Management. It's time for Teed Off. We're at the Valley Forge Casino, specifically the Pacific Prime, which is uh, one of Tony Clark's great restaurants here at the Valley Forge Casino Resort. All right, our panel today includes, we have a newcomer. We're going to break him in today. <laughs> Jim Smith, Jr. from the Philadelphia Cricket Club is here. Jim, good to see you. You're Thanks all for having me. Out. Appreciate it. everything ready to go. Joe Logan is no stranger to Inside Golf and here. teed off. Joe with MyPhillyGolf.com. That doesn't mean you're old. It means you're appreciated, Joe. You know that. Thank you very much. And Bob Shepard, another regular here on teed off. Bob, of course, an author, he writes his blogs, and he once in a while gives a lesson or two at Five Pop exactly. up in Warminster. Yep, good to see you, Good to see you, okay. good to be here. You know, we have uh, two golf pros, and Joe Logan, who knows a lot of golf professionals, to talk about the topic of how has that profession evolved over the years. Now, Jim, I hope you don't mind. I'm going to begin with the senior golf pro here. And that would be Mr. Shepard, who's been uh, a professional for, well, let's say, what year did you start? 71, 1971. 71. So you got a few miles yep. on um, that career in, of yours. Been in golf since 65. What My was dad your was first a job? As a, Sandy Run. As oh, a, as an assistant? As an assistant. As assistant, I went to Glen Oak in okay. Clark Summit, Pennsylvania. Yeah, great job up there. I uh, was assistant to a fellow named Jerry Port, good friend of Doug Sanders, and had a lot of tour connections. and. It was a wonderful job. He's a big hitter, and I was a big hitter, so we had a lot of a lot of, <laughs> uh, a lot of big hits. A lot of big hits going, <laughs> which was fun. Then from there, I moved down to manufacturers, and then on the Sandy Run, I became the head pro there when I was 26. So how many years? Only about four or five years before you were running the show. Exactly. At yeah. Sandy Run. Yeah. 
Uh, give me an idea of what you were doing as an assistant pro. What were some of the responsibilities? Yeah, you know, it's funny. When I turned pro in 71, it, it, if I had turned pro in, I think it was December of the year before, I could have been a Class A professional as I signed the paper. When I signed up, you had to go to all the, the educational seminars, which Jimmy's very familiar with now. They've become very, very pronounced and very necessary in golf. And when I was an assistant moving into the pro ranks, it was if you could teach or play. And nobody cared about selling shirts or shop conditions or anything. The best teachers, the best players were the ones that got the best jobs. And that was where we were. As we educated ourselves, we got better and better at things. We became more of a service-oriented organization as a profession. And the clubs have become more, uh, my God, the junior, you know, the junior programs they have, the ladies programs, the team matches, the golf association, all the handicapping, everything is so different. It's just a totally different, uh, you know, arena than, than when I first joined. And again, like I said, I could have been a class A pro like that and probably would have gotten a job like that too. But it took me three or four years of accreditation before I could get the credentials to move on. And then the fellow that I worked for was Jock McKenzie and when he, retired and stepped down it was it was a process i just walked in just handed me the key and we just nothing changed everything just kept right on going so jim how has i don't know when did you start your career as a professional golfer turn pro in 91 worked at uh riverton country club for fred phillips for a year and then i was lucky enough to get a head pro job at the abington club the old old york road uh country club in uh, jankentown, in jankentown. Yeah. and how long have you been at the cricket club i'm just starting my ninth year Ninth year. Yeah. So you got a little over 20 years as a professional. Mm -hmm. In those 20 years, how's the job changed for you, regardless of the location? Uh, I think you have to be a lot better at a lot more things than you used to be. Um, you know, echoing what Chep said, I think, you know, back in the day it was playing, it was teaching, and there weren't a whole lot of other uh, major things that you needed to do well. Now you have to operate a business. Uh, you know, we got big budgets, big staffs trying to make a lot of different people from a lot of different demographics happy. So, uh, you know, for me, I think, you know, a golf professional that's, that's truly getting the job done is really proficient at a lot of different things. Joe, you talk to a lot of golf professionals with MyPhillyGolf.com and over your years of covering this game. What have you seen change among golf pros? Uh, no better example than this man sitting right here who I've known for quite a few years. And I've seen him go from a guy behind the counter in the pro shop at Talamore to now he's a manager. He's, they don't, they don't have the, the title golf pro anymore. He's what, director, director of, golf. of golf. He's got two or three, uh, four or five assistants working for him, a teaching pro. I see much more specialization. I see much more uh, people having to learn to be managers and, and have to go back to school, you know, like he said, to run a business. Uh, and, uh, but I see guys specializing in teaching, and there's a whole bunch of guys in the section who are known really as players. They're really good players. Two or three of them work for Jim. Yeah, back in the day, Chef, it used to be clubs would go after guys who were players yes. and let them play. Exactly. They didn't yes. worry about the golf shop. Once in a while, they'd play with some right. of the members and all. But they used to like to see the Stan Dudases or the yeah. Al Best links, and I'm going way back now. And Ken Steer and was the name. On and tour. You, yeah, and you knew it was Huntington Valley. Bud Lewis, you didn't mention manufacturers. You knew it was manufacturers. The clubs were pronouncedly Bob Ross, Bob Ross North, North Hills, Hills, Philadelphia Cricket, whatever. But played in tour events on Bob, a regular uh, basis. And he was the self-appointed or whatever. Yeah. No, I, I, I guess you can't even say that. He was just he was the golf pro at Infinitum. One of your predecessors yeah. from North yes. Hills. He Billy went cricket. to the cricket, and yep. he went down well, and actually to yeah. Sawgrass. <laughs> down to Sawgrass. Before and up the there was yeah. the TPC course at Sawgrass Country Club across the road. I remember Dave Marr saying, you know, Bob Ross, there it is. There's your golf pro right, right. there. And you want a golf pro? There it is. consulting clubs, I believe, yes. Yes. Yes, who are is. looking for yep. professionals. Yep. And he came from Hazleton. He was up at Valley Country Club was for it? a start. Yeah, he was, like he, we were saying, behind the counter. He still spoken about in reverential terms at the cricket club. There are still members that know him and just the name comes up and all you hear is I just that's a love of that North Hills, Harry. He yeah. loved Stroll. North Hills. Same Bob thing. loved North Hills. One of the things I've noticed in watching all of this is uh, pretty early on guys, and women too, are identified as head pro prospects. And, and you watch, it's like football coaches. You know, a guy is identified pretty early on, and you can watch them grow and evolve and get promoted. And there are certain clubs around town that it's a credential you want to have to have been an assistant pro at Pine Valley or Marion or Cricket. You come out of there, 
26, you're head pro material, poof, you're, you're off and running. You're ready anywhere. Right. Yeah. And then you're picking guys just like head coaches do. You're bringing your guys like he did when he went to cricket. I'm sure you get a lot of people from all over the country now inquiring about, can I get on the staff? We're, we're lucky. I mean, you know, I'm lucky to be at a phenomenal club, great membership. They're incredibly supportive of the golf professional staff. Um, we're, at a, we're at a big club, so there's a lot going on. So when staff from cricket applies for a job, let's say at an 18-hole place, in general, it's probably not as active and not as busy and not as big as what we are. So that's actually a good thing when searching for jobs. And I like to tell our, our, our staff, I mean, each person that progresses into a new job, whether it be a head pro job or even in some cases, it's an assistance job at a, at a, at a nicer club, maybe in a different ge geographic region. It makes getting the next guy that much easier. It's gotten to the point now where, you know, we're lucky that I do get a lot of unsolicited resumes. And um, frankly, I don't actually pick most of the guys. I actually let the staff do most of the interviewing because that's who they're going to end up working the most with. Final question, how many actual 18 whole rounds do you get in in the course of a year? I'm a bad guy to ask that question because I have such a good job. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay. <laughs> we'll I, leave it at that. <laughs> we'll leave it at that. Fascinating discussion, guys. Thank you. Bob Shepard, Joe yeah. Logan, and Jim Smith, Jr. Inside Golf continues. We'll have more in just a moment. The Valley Forge Casino Resort is the region's only full amenity gaming resort. And it's only seconds from the Pennsylvania Turnpike at King of Prussia. It features 600 slots, 50 table games, plus eight restaurants designed to meet all of your dining needs. So put the beautiful Valley Forge Casino Resort on your destination list. At this moment, across the country, families are packing their bags for a getaway. And no matter where they end up, They'll all be home by dinner. Plan your own at PlayGolfAmerica.com. From finding fun and affordable programs to finding advice from PGA and LPGA professionals, PlayGolfAmerica.com has a way for you to get away. Visit today for details. PlayGolfAmerica.com, your link to the game. Free enterprise is the engine that drives our economy. Everyday businesses, big and small, work to make life better for their customers and a better life for themselves. Susquehanna knows successful businesses need a strong financial partner. Someone who can help keep your business running at peak efficiency. The people of Susquehanna Bank, doing what counts for businesses like yours. Member FDIC. Well, that's going to do it for this week's edition of Inside Golf. Don't forget, right here at Seaview, coming up, the dates are May 30th, the 31st, and June 1st. It's the annual LPGA ShopRoy Classic presented by Acer. And our thanks to the defending champ, Kari Webb. As I said, I hope Kari is back next year looking for the three-peat here at the ShopRite Classic at Seaview. Also, our thanks to Lila Mackey and Scott Riley for introducing us to the PGA of America's College Connection program. I'm Harry Donahue. That's it for Inside Golf. And remember, whenever it's gone bad for you out there, don't pick up. See you next week on Inside Golf, presented by Susquehanna Wealth Management. Inside Golf, presented by Susquehanna Wealth Management, helping you build, manage, and preserve wealth. And by the Philadelphia Section PGA, experts in the game and business of golf.